Well, if you're uh, you're ready, I'll do a real quick introduction. Absolutely. Okay. I get an opportunity uh, to speak to a lot of people about a lot of things. And, you know, sometimes it's about the economy or inflation or healthcare or, um, well, sometimes it's about the arts. I love talking to folks who are passionate about anything they do. And what's really exciting is that uh, I had an ask. Someone said, hey, would you like to talk to Brett Kissel? And I said, well, heck yeah. Uh, The Compass Project, South Album, four albums being released in one year north east south and west and for those of you who are just listening to this i have to tell you that uh this is quite an impressive biography Uh, three times platinum two times gold certified albums 10 times gold singles and uh, 16 top 10 radio hits to his credit brett kissel has had an extraordinary rise to superstardom since he first landed on the scene more than a decade ago and brett kissel is about to uh, launch two nights in truro and he's here with us from his hotel in halifax Whoa. yeah <laughs> and i just dropped the phone sorry buddy hey no worries at all brett kissel it's uh, so nice to see you how are you uh, i'm doing really well thank you and i i really appreciate the opportunity to have a conversation with you and i hope you're doing well too i'm i'm getting through it and we're getting past the the pandemic and i gotta ask how that feels to, to be back on stage again not necessarily concerned about what we just went through in the last two year, two and a half years? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, that uh, saying absence makes the heart grow fonder, that that is the truth. And my my love for travel, my love for performing and entertaining and being on these great stages across Canada, um, I missed it so much that now that I get this opportunity, I'm soaking it in more so than I ever thought I would. And not only me, but my band and our crew we're more excited about touring than we've ever been. And we've been very lucky to get to do this for, you know, uh, a good 10 years now. So yeah, the level of excitement is as at an all time high. From Alberta to Truro. And I see on your schedule, Grand Ole Opry stage in, a, in about a month's time, man, it's just gotta be so exciting to just be able to apply your craft to get out there. And I think more than anything, I, I'm so jealous of or envious of is, is that interaction, that, that, flow of energy between the crowd the audience and you tell me a little bit about that it's it's a wonderful connection and it's it's one of the best parts of this entire career and something that i really do crave and of course over the last couple years we didn't have that connection we try to do it through a screen like you and i are doing right now which is pretty darn good and i'm grateful for that technology but it isn't the same as having this relationship or this fun competition on stage that i often have where I will deliver as much energy and excitement as I possibly can. And we're going to see if the crowd can match my level of energy, which they always do. And then they actually one up me and then I try to one up them. And then it goes back and forth and back and forth. And that, um, that connection uh, is something that I, I, I crave and I truly, truly enjoy. But there's another thing um, is, is celebration. And we missed out on a lot of big moments to celebrate. It could be in music or songs that do really well, or it could be celebratory moments in, in, uh, you know, in their lives. And I'm talking like uh, about my fans and my crowd are celebrating big moments, even like Canada day, uh, and stuff like that. So I'm very, very excited that now we're back in the saddle and, uh, we're making up for lost time. I'm always a little leery of bringing up something I find on the internet because I'm never sure if it's entirely true, but I read that you were listening to your very first song on the radio when you were 11. Yeah. So there was, yeah, there was a, there was a local radio station called CFCW and AM radio, great country. They are, uh, they call it Alberta's country legend. And I played an event uh, the night before a fundraiser at the Ukrainian cultural heritage village and um you know i'm a you know pure purebred ukrainian uh, and i gave my cassette tape of cover songs to the radio station dj her name was jackie ray who's now become an, an amazing friend of mine and, and my wife and our kids she's an auntie to my kids and uh, i gave her this cassette and i said well i'd love to hear my music on the radio one day and she listened to it and she surprised me i just happened to be listening getting ready for school and she played one of my covers of a Hank Snow song called I've Been Everywhere. And she played that at about 7.30 in the morning as I'm eating toast and jam. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe I heard myself on the radio. 
Okay. You're a parent. Your kids are, you know, at that age, you're, they're not much younger than you were that time. Uh, I, I have to wonder what it was like in your family where they not only perhaps encouraged this, but were all right with their, their, their son playing on a stage at the age of 11. <laughs> It, it was it was a very interesting and very special upbringing. The support that I had from my family, and I'm talking like not just my mom and my dad and my grandparents on both sides, but I'm talking like the community, all my cousins, the extended family. I couldn't believe the support that I got. Um, we would play, uh, I don't know, it, it didn't matter where we would play. I would have 30, 40, 50 cousins show up because we have such a big family that everybody was related and everybody would come and buy a CD and buy a $10 ticket to come in and see me play. That was amazing. Where things got a little tricky is where this graduated from hobby to career. And now I'm in my teens and this is all I want to do. Now, I guess it was very similar to hockey where you can see a kid who is really coming up through the ranks and you feel that there's a very good opportunity that this kid can make it. And I had a lot of people around me tell me that you can make it. I didn't really know what that meant and I didn't really know what making it was all about. But now I'm in my late teens, I don't really care much about high school and I wanna to move to Nashville. And both my mom and my dad are teachers and they're saying, no, 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 you're gonna post-secondary. I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to Nashville. And they say, no, 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 no. You're going to university. And so the minute I graduated, I got in the truck and I drove to Nashville. I mean, I'm here doing what I'm doing today, but it was a very interesting couple of years where I would lock horns with my parents because I'm going to be a musician full time. And uh, they realized that it's very scary because not no one in our circle ever made it in music and it sure as hell ain't easy and the girls say dad i want to do what you do what do you say how do you deal with that oh, uh, what what i would say um is honestly is absolutely that would be the first word that would come out of my mouth no matter what they want to do it's it's absolutely um there's there's a, a belief system that many people this is only an observation this is not a a hasty generalization i feel that there's a belief system that has been instilled with the generation of my mom and my dad that, you know, what um, university education is the be all end all. And you have to get a safe job. But there's a really great quote that spoke to me from Jim Carrey, one of my favorite actors. And he said, look, my dad was a great comic. And Jim Carrey said he could have made it. But instead, he wanted to do something very safe. He became an accountant. And yet five years later, he ended up losing that job. So even though he did something very safe to provide for his family, he did something he didn't love and he still lost that job. So you may as well do something you love because if you're successful, great. If you're not successful, at least you did something you loved. So I categorize joy as the most important category or box to check off for my kids. If you love it, then I ain't going to stop you. Um, but I probably would do the same thing my parents did. And if I saw my kids doing something that they hated, I'd probably have a conversation and say, why are you doing this? Where's the joy in your life? So I've kind of flipped, flipped the script. Um, and I've had great conversations with my dad about this too. So um, I have no uh, ill will about my upbringing. I'm very grateful for the lessons that I learned in that amazing opportunities my parents gave me but joy is number one safety it's not really uh i don't even know if it's in the top 10 swinging for the fences four albums in one year i mean that's yep. ambitious that's is that a backlog of of, of pent-up material from the pandemic I'm just curious how you ended up landing on four albums in one year and, a, and basically concept album that yeah was the one i heard Exactly. It's it's very much a, a, a concept uh, record, but there are some amazing songs here that are still are still hit driven. So it is a backlog of material. Um, a lot of people would think that during the pandemic, I got um, you know I had had a lot of creative juices flowing, and it was actually the opposite. During that time, it was a very dark period for me. I didn't have a lot of motivation. I didn't want to write. 
I didn't know where the world was going to go. I didn't know when I would ever get back up on a stage. So I didn't want to write all of this material that is usually very happy and has a great bounce to it that feels really good because I didn't know if I'd ever get a chance to play it live. So what's the point? All that being said, what I did is I actually took a deep dive into my catalog from previous versions of myself when I first started dating my girlfriend who's now my wife Cecilia I looked at songs that were very western that I had never had the courage to record whereas now okay if we're going to do the compass project north east south west four albums west has got to be all country like I'm talking all western stuff um south needs to be nashville all hit driven new country that you'd hear coming out of music city east you know what i love the east coast more than anywhere else let's do a singer songwriter acoustic album and all of a sudden i had this creative burst of energy where i thought to myself oh my god this this is going to work this giant package is going to be amazing and then i told my management about it half of them thought it was very ambitious and like good for you man this is really cool the other half said this is ridiculous this is too much it'll never work but i'm very grateful that we rallied the troops and we're having the success that we're having and uh, hearing the ocean lapping up onto the shores and the songs um, that's not by yeah. accident no and and you can get a lot of that um like on on uh on pro tools or ableton and stuff like that when you're recording music you can just type in a sound effect and it's right there but there's an authenticity i wanted and um, we isolated that from a clip. I was standing at Peggy's Cove and I was looking out over the water. Um, it was just a very spiritual moment for me, uh, deeply touching, very emotional to be there in such a sacred spot in the world. And I remember that I wanted to, um, I was in the studio and I had remembered that I wanted to listen to my own audio of the waves um, that, that uh, like, you know, if I ever just need to meditate or calm my energy, calm down a little bit, you know? So I had that on my voice notes and I sent it to my producer and I said, hey, put this at the beginning of the record because it was legit from Peggy's Co. Two nights back to back in Truro. Tell me how that came to be. Um, I got to give credit to my, my tour manager and one of my best friends, Kevin Bushy. He and the good people at the Rath East Link Community Center in Truro said, we want to do something that is going to honor hometown heroes and essential service workers and, you know, frontline workers and everything. And how do we do this? And so it was their idea to put on a free show. And um, I guess they put it out to Facebook about if we're going to do a free show, who would you like to see? What genre would you like to see? And um, apparently I, I've got some popularity in, uh, in, in the hub in Truro. So we put one show up and the tickets were gone in 20 minutes. So they called me and they said, hey, you want to do a second show? I said, absolutely. And we uh, put the second show up the very next day and those tickets were grabbed in, in eight minutes. So in 28 minutes, we've got about 6,500 people uh, uh, coming out to see a big, big, uh, two big nights of country music. And I'm honored. And, and I heard your conversation with Paul Brothers on Global and uh, talking about, I'm not going to ask you which show is going to be better, but I'm, I'm going to ask you because I noticed uh, Metallica on tour is now having two nights back to back, totally different sets, totally different way of presenting their music. Is Are you going to have the same set both nights if people are lucky enough to see it two, twice? Well, you know what? The, the difference between old Metallica and old Brett Kissel is, 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 is pretty vast. You know, they've got decades and decades of hits and i'm just uh entering into the second chapter the second decade of my career you know um so with all that being said i know there's going to be a lot of similarities um in both shows but one of the magical things about my band in particular is the fact that we have this ability to change things uh and and turn this thing around on a dime and it's a wonderful skill set to have because if I see a sign in the audience or if there's a moment that I think I need to strip things back, I can do that. Or there's an opportunity to crank this thing up and take the party to a whole nother level. Well, we can do that too. So it's not going to be the same show. And the re reality is, is that I've never done the same show twice. We may start with this, you know, with the great opener. We may end with 
a particular song, but it's heads up hockey in the middle. And, uh, yeah. And, but that, that being said, our Saturday show is actually going to be broadcast live on, uh, on Eastlink community TV. So because of that, I did have to submit a set list because of clearances and they need right. to look at all of these different things. Um, but I even told them, I said, here's a list of songs I could go to if the moment is right. So, uh, I, I think I threw them for a loop. They were expecting me to do a 90 minute show that is very, you know, uh, predictable. And I said, yeah, I'm going to do these first two songs and then the rest of the show, I I'm going to wing it and you got to be okay with that. And, uh, so very interesting conversations. Uh, one of the last big shows at that uh, particular venue was Miles Goodwin in, in his farewell April performance Wine. with April Wine. And yeah. as I've spoken with Miles many times in that journey that that I mean, here we we're talking uh, to Brett Kissel about Metallica and April Wine here. But growing up in Canada, I, I grew up in rural Nova Scotia and spent time in Saskatchewan. And our playlists were like the modern MP3 players. They had a bit of everything. You know, we were listening to all influences. I'm, assu- I'm assuming that was the same. Absolutely. For you. Very, very much so. And I mean, you know, growing up in, in, in rural Alberta, of course, country music uh, reigned supreme, uh, reign supreme. It was a uh, uh, very important part of my upbringing. But my dad, God, he loved April Wine. And because of that, I love April Wine. We've done a cover of Roller in our set, uh, you know, many times. Um, beautiful piano ballad, like a lover, like a song. Ooh, what a night, you know, could have been all right. Could have been here tonight. You know, could have been a lady is a great song. Um, and then I always loved this song. Uh, Rock and roll is a vicious game. And those lyrics I didn't get until I really became a part of the business and understanding. Yeah, this is a very difficult, very difficult business where you feel that you've got connection. You feel that you've got an allegiance from your fans or from industry or from a record label, but you're only as good as your last hit. And that's why rock and roll is a vicious game. And uh, I wanted to come out and see that show. Um, I wasn't able to. We had a family, uh, a family situation that, um, you know, I had to be at home for. But uh, I surprised my dad, which we ended up canceling. And it's, it's, it's sad that we couldn't do it. But I had a flight and we had two tickets. My dad and I were going to fly and watch that show um, in Truro. So I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sad I missed it. But I did get a chance to actually have April Wine open for us at the ha- Havelock Country Jamboree in 2019. And me and the band were side stage watching them sing Roller and uh, all these great songs. Uh, it, 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 was, it was really special. From an 11-year-old who's singing Hank Snow to talking about a legend like April Wine, there's there's just so much, so many different directions here. But I, I know people who are going to be at the show are going to be very, very excited and very happy to see you perform. And as you say, this is to help uh, support or, you know, is in support of uh, those frontline workers and something that uh, I think we've all grown to appreciate over the last little while. And uh, hey, it's a real pleasure to meet you this way. And maybe that uh, that dream home somewhere in Nova Scotia someday will happen for you. Well, then maybe what we'll do uh, is we'll extend a little Nova Scotia East Coast hospitality to you. And um, in the event that I do end up uh, getting a cottage uh, somewhere out here, out east, um, let's uh, let's let's have a drink and let's have a visit. I, I was out in uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrencetown, out in the Annapolis Valley. And um, really, really considering uh, investing in a winery out there and uh, doing some great work. So there's a lot of people that say they they love the East Coast, um, but I don't know if anybody, if any uh, Westerner loves the East as much as I do. Well, I wish you nothing but success. Break both legs two nights back to back in Truro. <laughs> Brett Kissel, thank you. It's a real treat to meet you. So thank you so much for this. No, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Never have I ever thought I would get somebody like you